Ann Vicki with Tri-State RV in Anna, Illinois. And today we're going to do a walkthrough of this 2020 Forest River XLR Boost 21 QBS. We'll go ahead and start here with the power tongue jack. Right here you've got a light switch that turns this light on and off so when you're backing up to your camper it's a little bit easier to see. This button here is what runs your power jack so if you press it up, it raises the unit up, press it down, lowers the unit. Right here are your propane tanks. You can take this cover off. There's a bungee strap. You really only need to take it off if you need to have your tanks filled. Otherwise, you can flip these little knobs back, flip this cover up, and you're able to access the propane tanks. And then right in behind the tanks is your battery. We've already got it connected for you. In the off chance that your electric jack stops working, you're still able to crank it up and down inside your front compartment this will be in there. All you do is pop this plastic cover back. There is a nut inside of this that you line it up with. It'll kind of lock in place. And then you just turn it and the jack will move up and down depending on which direction you're moving this. Right here on the driver's side at the front of the unit, you've got your storage space. You just flip this here and there is a light in here. You can either set it to motion sensor or you can leave it on. Um, and then your battery disconnected is in here as well. Here are your electric jacks. So we'll talk about the leveling system in just a moment. I'll show you how to work it. Um, here is your outdoor shower. If you want to fold this up, it's just like a regular shower. But if you want to fold this hose up, you can roll it up like so. takes the same key for here as it does your compartment. To level your camper, the first thing you're going to want to do is level it as best as you can front to back with the front jack. And then once you get to that point, you'll level it with your electric jacks. So we'll go ahead and extend them. One of the jacks will come down a little bit faster, that's okay. What's going to happen is once that jack hits the ground, this jack will start coming down. show you how to remove your spare tire as it is under the front of the unit. So what you do is you just take this rod here, it slips over this nut, and you just crank it down. Here's your outdoor entertainment. So you do have a TV mount here. You have the same TV mount inside. So what you can do is unplug your TV from inside, bring it out, and slide it on this mount because it does have the reverse mount on the back of the TV. You've also got your outdoor speakers and here are your cable and satellite hookups and outlets. Right here is your auxiliary tank so you would put your fuel in here and right here is a pump. In order to run this pump you open this you press this button on and you'll be able to use the pump. You also have a gauge here to show how full your tank is. It does hold 30 gallons. And then here's the controls for your rear electric jacks. This unit does have a lighted power awning. So you've got the blue LEDs 
on each side on the awning arms. Uh, I'll show you how to run the awning out when we get inside, but I'll go ahead and describe it. When you run the awning out, you want to be able to see this little flap. Do not continue to extend it past the flap as it will continue to roll out, which will roll the fabric back up. And it does make it a little bit difficult to roll it back out once it's rolled backwards. On the driver's side here, we've got all your major appliances. So this right here is your furnace and you're definitely gonna wanna get bug screens to cover these so that you don't get dirt daubers or mice inside of your furnace. Uh, these are your water connections. So here is your city water connection. You just pop that back, screw your hose in place, and it will run through directly through the pipes. Here's your fresh water connection. So this will run into your tank. All your water will go into your tank. There is a uh, level reader in there that you can see how full your tank is. And again, you just pop the hose on there, screw it on. There's a screen to protect any debris water from the pressure regulator. You really only need it for your city water since it is running directly through your lines. For your fresh water, you don't need it. Also here is your cable and satellite hookups and your black tank flush. So you would just put your hose on there, just screws in place uh, and run it. It'll run directly into your black tank. You can drain your black tank, it'll clean your black tank out. To drain your lines, all you have to do is hook up your hose and lock it in place. It'll be a whole mess if you don't. And then you just pull the valves. Now, there's nothing in the black tank because we haven't drained the toilet yet. There is a little bit of water in it just so we can show that there's water in it um, and make sure that the lines are good. But your gray tank is draining out the antifreeze. Um, make sure that your tanks are completely drained before you do your black tank flush. So right here is your fresh water tank drain. We do have water in the tank right now, so it is going to release some. Uh, but you just pull that valve, and once the tank is completely empty, close it. Here's your water heater. In order to access your water heater, the interior of it, there's this little tab here. You flip it, and you pull this panel down and it'll just kind of sit there. So this is the inside of your water heater. Uh, when there is air in the lines or you're winterizing your unit, what you're gonna wanna do is pull that up. It's gonna release some water, but it's also gonna release any air that's in the system. Now, when you are winterizing your unit, you're going to want to uh, pull this tab up and let it, uh, drain out as much as it'll possibly drain out and then you pull this rod right here if you pull this rod before you let the pressure off the system it will shoot this rod and tons of water out and you'll get soaked now another thing is your water heater is both gas and electric so to run it off of electric this switch right here has to be in the on position We'll take a look inside and I'll show you how to run it off of gas. This unit is gen prepped. Your generator would sit right here underneath the slide. So it's essentially just plug and play. If you were to purchase a generator and sit right in here, we'd get it installed super easy, pretty quick. Before we go inside, I wanna show you a couple of different things. First and foremost, your handle does fold back. It folds over in front of the door. When you're traveling, you definitely want to fold it over in front of the door in case you forgot to lock it or it didn't latch all the way, then it's able to hold the door closed. Go ahead and open it back up. Your top lock uh, is your door lock. This is your deadbolt. In order to use your stairs, if you need to adjust them, there are pins on each side. You just pop those out and you're able to adjust the legs. Go ahead and put the pin back in place for now. Now, to travel, you want to hold your steps up like so. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little blue latch here. You set your stairs up, you pull that latch, and there's a white notch here that will sit behind the door frame. That's how you know your stairs are secure. And then you can just 
close your door right over your stairs. Again, put the handle over the door. To run your water heater off of gas, you want to flip this switch on and it'll light up blue and this light will come on. Now, while we're here, I'll go ahead and explain the rest of the panel. Right here is your water pump. If it's blue, it's on. Unless you are, unless you have water in the fresh tank, I recommend keeping your pump off so that it doesn't burn up. Um, now, you won't have to use the water pump if you're connected to city water. When you're connected to city water, you'll have enough pressure to run through the lines that you won't need your pump. Right here are your tank readings. So here's for your battery. As you can see, it's full. We just put a fresh battery on it. Here's your fresh tank. It says empty or low. We didn't put very much water in it, just enough to test the system. Here are the buttons for your black tank to show the level of your black tank. You do have uh, two buttons for the black tank. You only have the one, so you have the option of a second one. And here's the button for your gray tank. As you can see, they're all empty. Now down here are all of your lights. So, and they're properly labeled. This is your ramp light, so this is gonna light up the party deck. This is your living room light, so it's gonna light up all of the light, the main interior lights inside. It won't light up your bedroom or your bathroom though. Uh, this is your awning light, so it's gonna light up the blue LEDs on the awning. And this is your ground light. What your ground light is, there are blue LEDs around the base of the camper. I will show you that in just a moment, um, but that's up to you. They're mostly around the wheel wells. And then here is for your awning, and I'll show you how to use your awning. I'm going to show you your ground lights. See the blue LEDs? We'll come around to here. To run your awning in and out, all you have to do uh, there's a button right here It says front awning extend and retract. To run it out, you would hit extend, so you just press the button up. To run it in, you would hit retract. And again, that flap right there, as long as that's down, stop. Don't run it out anymore. When it's running up, that flap will hold up underneath it, and the awning will run all the way in. You'll hear it touch the side of the camper, and that's when it will stop. It won't try to continue to run in. So we've already got your TV set up. Um, however, here's the cable hookup, and then you've also got uh, another hookup here. If you can see it, this green light here is your uh, satellite booster. So if you're not getting any channels on your TV, you just wanna press this button, and as long as that green light is on, the satellite booster is on. Uh, and then here are your RCA hookups. Here's your radio. To turn your radio on, you just simply tap the volume button. Right now it's set to radio, but, hang on, let me turn this down. You can change the mode. So there's two auxiliary ports. Uh, one runs the actual auxiliary port, one runs the headphone jack. You can change it to Bluetooth or of course your radio. And then to change from FM to AM, you simply press band. Now, this radio does control both the inside speakers and the outside speakers. So for the inside speakers, this is zone one. You just press zone one and it'll mute the speakers inside. You press zone two and it'll mute the speakers outside. both an AC and a furnace. I'm going to go ahead and show you. Here on your AC, you've got a vent right there. If you slide those open, you'll see that the vent is open. Most of your air will be forced down through here. If you close them like they are now, they'll come through the duct. Go ahead and show you what your temperature reading is through the ductwork. Right now we're sitting at an average of 48 degrees. I do have the thermostat set pretty low and I'll show you how to use the thermostat in just a moment. 
this is your thermostat. It's right inside the door on the wall that the TV's on. Uh, right now I've got it set on the furnace. Again, it's set on 90, it's 82 degrees in here. Uh, after the furnace ran for about a half an hour, it's getting a little toasty because it's 75 degrees outside. Uh, we'll go ahead and change it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap the power button uh, and we want, it, I'll show you how to change the temperature real quick. You don't have to mash at the arrows, you just have to lightly press and you can change the temperature. Right now, it's off. Tap it again. This runs just the fan. It'll come out of the ductwork or depending on if you've got the vent open on the actual AC unit, it'll come out of that. This is AC. I need to go back to... Right here is how you change the setting. When you're running the furnace, it has to be on auto. You can run it on high or low for the AC. Now the only thing about that is um, it'll never shut off. <laughs> so if you want the AC to shut off at a certain temperature, you'll want to leave it on auto. Just below your thermostat is a switch. Because the AC, the fireplace, the microwave all pull so much power, you're only able to run either the AC or the fireplace. So we're gonna go ahead and switch it to fireplace real quick. And First and foremost, I'll show you the, the great thing about the fireplace is because this isn't a very big unit. Um, if it's, you know, 50, 60 degrees outside, you can turn your fireplace on. It does run off of electric and it'll heat the unit. If it's a little bit colder than that, freezing temperatures, you're probably going to have to kick on your furnace. To turn it on, the power button's right here. Uh, you've got two heat settings, high or low. And you can also shut the heat off so you only get the light. We'll go ahead and shut it off because it's a little toasty in here. Um, you can also change the color of the fire. And then you also have a timer. So it'll shut off after a certain time. You can do 30 minutes, one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour, five hour. And that's All right, we'll go ahead and take a look at your kitchen. You do have plenty of cabinet space. Uh, when you close these cabinets, they do have a locking mechanism. Uh, essentially what that is, is when you close these cabinets, they're not going to come open. If they do happen to come open or come loose, they can be adjusted. This just needs to be adjusted a little bit. Uh, right here is obviously your sink. It's a large single basin sink. It does have a pull down sprayer that has two settings. The light under here is push button. So right in the center of the light, you can feel it. You would just mash that button. Uh, you've got a GFCI in here. Your blinds are mini blinds. They do come loose from the clips or you can leave them in place for travel. Right here, you've got a drying rack. You can fold it up, put it in a drawer or set it right here. So, that's fit. If you mm -hmm. want to light one of the three burners, you just choose which burner. They are labeled just like they are on a regular stove. You set it to high, turn this knob here, lights right up. Same thing with the oven, except for there is a little fire symbol here that lights the pilot light. So, when you've got it on the fire symbol lined up with the arrow, you just turn this. This button right here shuts the LEDs off on the stove. When you're traveling, you want to put these down, this down, it is glass. If you leave it up, you hit a big bump, it could shatter. Uh, you've got a drawer here, two drawers there, and a cabinet door here. Your hot water heater is underneath these drawers here and uh, in order to winterize them you would have to turn the valves the opposite way that they are right now. Up here is your microwave, pretty basic like any other microwave. Right here you've got a light switch for the stove and a fan. 
So here's your refrigerator. To turn it on and off, uh, you just press the power button here. You have to hold it to turn it off. And you'll hear it beep. Turn it back on. You just mash the power button again. Uh, and you can change the setting of the freezer and the refrigerator separately. Right here, it shows what the, uh, the top part is white, so that's the freezer. Over here, the bottom part is white, so that's the refrigerator. And I'll show you, your freezer is setting at negative two degrees right now. And your refrigerator, which I've left my bottle of water in there. We're sitting at average of 34, 35 degrees. But I do have it on the middle temperature. So again, you can adjust the temperature. Down here is your fuse box. It's just below the refrigerator. Uh, so what'll happen, you'll be able to see it even with this cover on. A uh, red light will pop up if you've blown a fuse. They are properly labeled, as well as the uh, breakers. And over here is your carbon monoxide detector. It'll start going crazy if there is carbon monoxide inside the unit. It will also do that if your battery is dying. The only reason for this uh, is so that you're alerted that your battery is dying so that if your battery is low and you run out of power from the battery, you know, hey, I need to charge my battery so that my carbon monoxide detector works. Right now we're inside the bathroom. Here you've got a medicine cabinet, has a mirror on it. Uh, here is your vanity. Just above your vanity, you do have a GFCI outlet. This is your main GFC, GFCI outlet. So if you're camping and your outlets aren't working, You'll want to check this first, make sure it's not tripped. Uh, if it is tripped, just press the reset button. Uh, now, if it's not tripped, next thing you're going to want to do is check the breaker box. If the breaker's not tripped either, there's a good chance that your GFCI, GFCI has went bad. It happens sometimes. We absolutely recommend to keep one on hand. And we also recommend to have a licensed electrician install it so you don't run into any issues. Over here is your shower, nice large shower. You got a shower curtain, pretty basic. Water on and off. Now, down here, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a black vent. This is where your uh, heat comes through. And there are vents here and there throughout the unit. Your light switch for the bathroom is right here. Uh, however, it does have a push button light. So if you just wanted to shut the light off at the light itself, you could do that. Your toilet is what we call a kickstand toilet. Right now I've got a little bit of water in there. In order to put more water just in the bowl, I'm gonna gently press on this and it's gonna fill up the bowl. To drain that, you just press down all the way. So here we are in the bedroom. Right here you've got a dresser with six drawers. They're nice, large, deep drawers. Uh, you do have a mirror. Over here on this wall there is a switch for the light above the mirror. Uh, and right here you've got a nice deep closet. So the only slide on this unit is right here in the bedroom and it's the bed. In order to run this slide in, the switch is over there and I'll show you how to run it in in just a moment. Um, but what you're gonna wanna do is fold the mattress up as long as it is the top of the mattress is past the top of the slide the slide will run in properly if you don't fold the mattress up it's going to mash into the wall so what you see on the bed here you've got a sheet for the bed and then this is your table for the uh, toy hauler area it's very basic you just run these legs up they'll lock in place so right here inside the door, uh, I want to show you, there are actually three interior doors inside this unit. They are all barn door style. They just slide. There is a track at the bottom 
If your unit's not completely level, when that door is fully open, it may come out of the track. All you have to do is run it all the way closed, slide it in the track, you'll be able to slide the door close again. For travel, you're going to want to snap these in place so that they don't move. Over here is your light switch for the bedroom. It does only control the two lights right here. Your light switch for the mirror again is above the dresser and the light switch, the light above the bed is pushed Right up. here is your slide switch. It is labeled in and out, slide out room, so you don't, you don't forget. Uh, so again, you fold your mattress up, you just press and hold the in button until it runs all the way in. Before we move on to the toy hauler area, I wanted to show you the recliners. So what you do, they do spin. Uh, there's a little latch here on the side. You can pop your recliner out and it'll actually recline back. All right, here we are at the ramp door. So let your ramp down. All you have to do, turn these latches up on both sides. Push up. Push up. Now this door is spring assisted, so it's not overly heavy. Just let it down real easy. To use this as a ramp, all you have to do is pop these pins out and you'll be able to take the cables loose. You can also uh, take them loose from up there and put them in the drawer. Um, or you can leave them in to run the party deck down. To use the party deck, all you have to do let this latch out. Locks in place. You pull the gate closed, and there is a pin here that lines up so that the lock stays in place. We'll go ahead and take a look inside so I can show you the Happy Jack bed. So before I talk about the Happy Jack bed, I'll show you your window has blackout curtains. They just snap on and off. Hold that down so it's not the way. Your uh, lower bunk is also a dinette set. It slides back and forth. Like so. Uh, in order to get the top bunk down, what you're going to have to do, there's a button over here that says bed lift control up or down. Uh, you have to Run these up just a little bit so that you can pull the legs up like so and then get a hold of the bottom of the bunk and flatten it out. Run your lower bunk up. While we're waiting on this lower bunk to run up, there are there's an outlet on that side the USB port, and then you've got push button lights. Before we run these all the way up, these do fold up against the wall. There's pins on each side. Just hold 
down. It does set in these, sit in these little notches. Once I get it up a little bit higher, so and you always want to have your pins in place. This will prevent injuries. If there's anything that I missed or you have any further questions, please feel free to give us a call at 618-833-7744 and we'll get your questions answered.